Hello. In this video, I'm going to go over how to get started in information technology. My first job was actually as a IT support technician for the United States Army, and I'm just creating this video on how I would go back and <laughs> redo it. In the technology field, there are two main paths. There are software development and information technology. And then IT honestly deals more with infrastructure and networking and cloud maintaining network systems. The first step to get started in IT would be to research the field and also ask yourself really important questions, such as what size of company do you want to work for? For instance, larger companies usually have a more need for credentials and degrees and things of that sort. And what are your interests? What are your values and your priorities? What type of work environment do you want? I'm guessing if you're watching this, it's probably remote. What kind of education or training is required? And what type of culture do you want to be part of? And I say these things because what you choose will really kind of shape what industry you want to go into. The financial industry is a lot different than the health industry. Or if you want to go in the Department of Defense, it's probably a lot different than working at the state level. Knowing this about yourself will really kind of shape what types of companies you're going to look for, which would then decide what skills you're going to choose. Along with the, the internet research you're going to do, I would really highly recommend reaching out to people on LinkedIn because the internet doesn't have all of the answers and getting different context from people who work in the field is always beneficial. When you reach out to people on LinkedIn, try to figure out something that you have in common. Try to find a common link that's usually a minority in the field or an alumni of some group or something of that sort. It really stands out when I'm looking through the tons of questions. The next phase is to learn the basics of IT. And honestly, you can do this in about 30 days. And that is the basics of hardware. So what is memory? What is CPU? The basics of networking, what's a switch, what's a router? How does a network work and things of that sort? System administration, managing and maintaining a computer, backups, maybe Windows and Linux, what a virtual machine is and how to use them and set them up, just basic stuff. Security tools, I mean, everyone who works in IT technically does work in security. So just the basics of security, vulnerability management, patches, what malware is, Trojan, horses, and all of that fun stuff. Also, cloud is becoming more and more prevalent. So knowing what infrastructure of a service is, software as a service. There are many different ways that you can go about learning information technology basics. The first one and most common one is probably getting a degree. So is an information technology degree worth it? And to me, I would tell you, if you are going to go into debt for the degree, then no. If you can pay for it out of pocket, then why not, right? Or if it's free, why not? I don't really think that you need a degree to get started in IT or even software development. So I personally, one of my favorite certs is the Google IT support certificate. I do have a link below if you wanna check it out, but it lays out everything so well and crystal clear, great production quality. They tell you how to do your resume and all of that sort. And people have actually gotten jobs just from that certificate. If you're coming from a customer service background, it's even easier to switch into IT and help desk really quickly without going through years upon years of a degree program. Some people will say you can skip the help desk and that is true, but if you just need to start working quickly, it's a great route to go. The next one while doing and studying all of this is to take really good notes. I really wish someone had told me that. If you're interested, Tiago Fort has a book called Building a Second Brain and tons of free material. I took actually his course like a couple of years ago and it has changed my entire life because I'm just not a naturally organized person. And it really just gave me structure to how I organize things and put them into folders. And I also take notes on everything and then put it into my note taking app. After you've learned the basics, you're gonna wanna choose a specialization. Now in IT, there's many different fields you could go, right? But if you're just looking at entry level jobs, some really good entry level jobs are a network administrator and working at a NOC. I would say that is a great position to be in because you're going to have a lot of downtime depending on, of course, the company, but a lot of places, NOCs are very slow. IT or desktop or help desk, 
And then early careers, more like system administration, data center technicians are becoming more and more common. I know there's like a whole bunch where I live. And while you're doing this, the step four is to make your own experience and then document it. People always ask, I don't have any experience. You should create a personal project for the position that you want. That's why it's really important to choose a specialization because you know exactly where you're going. Even if you're just wanting an IT support position, you can make documentation on basic desktop help desk stuff and put it on your resume. I used to recommend creating your own website. Now I really think you can just use Notion and more and more companies are using Notion for their documentation and their workflow because it's so good. Before doing this, there are so many different projects you can do. You really need to figure out like what you want to do, right? So that's why I suggested the research and then the choosing the specialization and knowing what exactly industry you want to work in. The easiest option is just to look at your current industry and then see what skills are transferable to an IT job because you probably have a lot if you do an inventory. The next step is to make sure your resume is good. Now I do have free resume templates below, but your resume is the first impression a company is going to see about you and they'll weed you out fairly quickly. I really wish I had known that, but it's really cool. People still use resumes for hiring, despite what anybody may say. So some common things is you really want to have a focus. If you want an IT support job, make sure your job duties are related to IT support. Make sure you, you show that how you're competent for that. I've seen a lot of resumes where they want to get say into cybersecurity and I'm sure they have done security level tasks and they have some accomplishments with that but it's not really on their resume or their resume has no flow and it doesn't really tell a story about who they are or what they want. It's kind of just all over the place. So you really have to do a lot of planning and strategy behind that in order to produce a good resume. The next thing you're really going to want to do that I often don't do, <laughs> but yet I'm telling you because I wish I did is to network. I have gotten a few jobs just from people recommending me, right? So if I had done more networking, I probably may have even more opportunities that I just don't know about. I was always turned off by the idea of networking. And it's because the way it was taught to me is like you go out and you find people that are in your industry in hopes of getting a job. So it was always like I need to go make friends to get something out of them. And it just rubbed me the wrong way. I'm just not that person. Until I came across like the law of serendipity. The more that you put yourself out there and take action, the more happy coincidences are to happen. By helping other people without any expectation of return, honestly, I think is the best way to network. And then that comes the interview. So the interview is a lot more than just the technical interview. If you know the basics and you have been studying for like, say to become a desktop support engineer, it's relatively easy. Like the technical interview is not that hard. They're also looking for how you think, how you make decisions, how you solve problems, how you deal with conflict, how easy you are to manage and how quickly you can adapt to change how you work with others and all of that fun sort. So you're really going to like, just not be a, a crappy person. <laughs> There's also a lot of interview prep, but also it's just kind of like inner work here. What type of person are you? And you won't have to do any type of faking if you're just that person naturally. It's when people are like hard to deal with, that is when you're going to have to pretend that, that you're agreeable. But if you're just naturally an agreeable person and you get along with others just fine, you're not going to have to pretend or even really prepare for that. It's just kind of who you are in general. So to me, it's just be authentic. And if you're not a nice person and you're hard to deal with, maybe work on that, right? So I used to not, I used to be terrible at working with other people. And I really had to like develop my skills on working with other people. Become the person that is hireable instead of all of these tactics and techniques. And so that concludes my how to get into IT roadmap, kind of like just an overview of what to do, but leave any questions below. And I have a lot of other videos about career and cybersecurity if you want to get into that. And I'll see you in the next video.